to find out it's it's it means we lost the duct on the pullback. Um, you know, 20 years ago that hardly ever happened. If I mean, it really created a or usually only happened in a adverse environment. Uh, I do think there's a couple different reasons it's happening. It's not all uh, operator error or, or uh, mismanagement or anything like that. Uh, some of it has to do up on the equipment side, I believe, as well. Um, and, and Troy and I have talked about that before. Uh, but also, um, a lot of it, you know, with, with the speed at which these machines are pulling back, uh, you got to kind of understand that when, when you got a dry hole, something's going to happen, and it's usually not a positive thing. So if you're out 800 feet and, and you're pulling back and, and you're um, you're you're utilizing the the strengths of that Vermeer equipment uh, or ditch witch if that's what you have. Um, there's a good chance at some point in in the wrong environment, meaning sandy conditions, uh, uh, tight clay conditions, you're you're going to have a problem. And and I know everybody here just wants to go home as quick as possible. I believe in the long run, uh, using fluids. Uh, you know, when, when it's uh, appropriate at least, and, and then maybe even beyond that, um, will help get you home more often than not at the time you want to be home, as opposed to uh, breaking off, as, as we say. And, and a lot of that breaking off is simply not wanting to take the time uh, to mix fluids properly. Um, so without further ado, I, these guys can have the floor and and hopefully convince you that's the case. Yeah, and to, to, to add to Dan, you know, I, I think the, the cost that you invest in fluids will far exceed, um, you know, the money you're going to make by using them. So, I mean, it's, it's important to, to use them to, to stabilize your hole. So, like Dan said, my name is Troy Jansen. I'm with Vermeer Midwest, and I, I, I work out of the uh, Goodfield, Illinois location. So, um, is this on? Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I work for a company, Vermeer Midwest. We have 10 locations in four states. So some of you guys I know are contractors from Southern Illinois, and you may deal with our Chesterfield location for support. So that is part of our group. Um, that is the family that I work for. And... Uh, to my right here is Christian Rich. He is our dealer representative for ProAction Fluids. And to kind of take you down the timeline, we have had these fluids, MI Swatco fluids, for uh, as long as I've been working for Vermeer, almost 17 years. And, you know, you know, as you guys are aware, the industry is really changing, and it's changing fast. And we have to be quicker. And we have to be better at what we're doing. And, we realized that, and about three years ago, we brought these guys on board um, because their fluids just work. Um, and and you, what you're going to find if you start using these fluids, or if you're already using these fluids, um, you know, most soil conditions that you guys are going to encounter, these are going to be your go to fluids. So um, they're convenient, they're fast, they're easy to carry and the cost to use them are gonna be less. So that's why we brought them on board to try to be productive as possible. So I'm gonna turn it over to Christian and he's gonna get started. Thank you very much cover it all, Troy. <laughs> Talk um, to you later. Yeah, so you guys obviously have a lot of things that you have to pay attention to throughout the course of the day on a job site, whether it be utility locating, watching out for traffic, whatever it may be. So um, certainly a lot of things that tie up your time and so our goal as ProAction is to really simplify the mud mixing process, make it quick, make it easy, um, something that's easily repeatable, even if you bring on a new guy to the crew. You can say, okay, do one of this, one of this, one of this, we're drilling the clay, that'll get us through most all of our scenarios. So that's really our goal is at the end of the day, increase your efficiency and do it by adding simplicity throughout, uh, kind of throughout the process. Um, don't have a ton of time to go through the products, but what we're really gonna focus in on is the um, our main clay drilling additives and kind of uh, the importance and how they work. Um, so before I get to talk about it, I did bring a sample case. I think I've got about 40 of them out in my truck. So just raise a hand. Has anybody tried ProAction fluids in the past? 
Any proaction folks? Okay, so we got a few guys. Um, even if you have used it, I've still got, like I said, about 40 cases out there. So if you have a drill, try to just take one per drill and kind of see what's left and we'll divvy it up from there. Um, but in that, in that case, you'll have basically what you see up here on the table. There's two pro drill, a clay lock, a pro dine, and a couple of the cleaner products. Um, so just kind of a little starter kit so you can at least kind of try it, get a feel for it, uh, and uh, see what you think. There's also um, mixing charts in there that stick on the side of your mix tank. So these are actual stickers, and that kind of guides you through how to mix the products. Or like I said, if you have a new guy and you're not quite sure how to do it, you just have to pay a little bit of attention to the chart that's stuck on the side of the mix tank, and it will uh, help him get at least pretty close to what he needs in the tank for product. And I'll come back to this here shortly. Um, so running through the products here, so drill clean. So this is a cleaner product, mainly for your tanks on your uh, on your mix tank. So if you have bentonite buildup in your tanks, or maybe you're getting a lot of algae buildup, drill clean is a pretty inexpensive way to help keep your tank running at running highly efficient, um, keep it clean, keep your pump clean. Um, so, and all of the products are one package per 500. It's kind of your starting point for just so from a simplicity standpoint, everything's dosed to be one package per 500 gallons. So it kind of eliminates the guesswork of how much to add. Um, so the drill cleans the same way. One bag is kind of your starting point for cleaning your tanks. Um, the other thing you can do is use it as a preservative for your polymers. So say you're out on a shop or maybe low gates didn't come through, something like that, you've got 400 gallons sitting in your tank and you've got to leave it sit for a day or two or maybe over a weekend, you can add drill clean to it and that'll actually preserve your fluid and help it maintain its properties and not break down over the course of that weekend. Um, so it's, it can be used a, a few different ways, but the main, main intent behind it is to clean your tanks, kill all the bacteria, help keep the algae down, um, those sorts of things. Uh, so this was actually a tank that was vandalized, so somebody dumped asphalt in a customer's tank. And you can kind of see where they tried to power wash it out and it was stuck in there really bad. They used a couple bags of drill clean and they were able to clean it all up and flush it out of the tank. Um, like I said, there's a couple of those in those sample cases as well. Um, so the ProDyne. So the important thing to know about ProDyne is a two-in-one product. So if you've ever used soda ash, you know soda ash softens your water so that your bentonite yields out better um, or your polymers work better. So ProDyne will actually soften your water, um, which allows your pro drill or your uh, whatever other products you're adding to the tank to disperse out, hydrate more efficiently, faster, all that. So um, that's one of the key things, but then it also acts as a detergent. So if you've ever used a soap or a detergent while you're drilling, you know it makes a big difference in how clean your drill, your tooling, your vices, your stripler, your rollers, saves your rod wiper. So you'll know how important detergents are if you've and kind of see the benefits. So ProDyne does both those things. So it softens your water, kind of like a water softener in your house. Um, and then it also acts as a detergent to keep, uh, keep things from sticking to your drill rods, sticking to your product or your pullback. So a lot of times um, what guys will see is if there's a little bit of drilling fluid around their drill stem that they're pulling back, those rods will actually be almost clean, if not clean, by the time you hit the rod wiper. Um, so you can kind of use your imagination on what that means. I've got a picture here too. So this is a really sticky clay um, where they weren't using any ProDyne. And then this is a sticky clay where they were using ProDrill and ProDyne. You can tell it's super creamy and the cutting just kind of shed right off the rods. So um, yeah, it's a good product to use. Troy, I don't know if you've got anything to add. You know, I use ProDyne a lot, guys, in, in my tanks on, on my VAX, yeah. my water tanks. You wouldn't believe, if you guys are running VAX, how that keeps the insides of the hoses clean to be more productive. And when you're doing your cleanup, when you're dumping your vax, hardly any material will stick to that tank. We've got guys running big vac trucks. It takes them almost an hour to, to dump their tanks and clean. They basically cut that down to a third. So if you guys in the crowd got some vax, uh, I'm running the ProDyne in, in my vac tanks too, my, right in my water when I'm potholing. Yep, and it won't create a foam either, so there's some detergents that will foam, so it wouldn't be ideal in a back tank scenario. Um, this will not foam, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. Drill clean can also be used in your back tanks if you always get algae blooms in your tank or uh, kind of cover it up the sides. The drill clean can be used in that scenario as well. 
Uh, so clay lock. I'm sure guys, have, if you've ever been drilling out and you've noticed that your rotation pressure continues to climb, you know you're in clay and just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing, or you're pulling back and the product just keeps tight, getting tighter and tighter and tighter, uh, there's a good chance you could be in a reactive type clay. Uh, so when we get into those scenarios, you really need to add something to your mix that helps prevent those clays from absorbing the drilling fluid and swelling. That's what's happened. Just kind of like how bentonite, bentonite absorbs water and swells, it's a clay. The clay in the ground can do the same thing if it's the right, if it's the right kind of swelling clay. Um, so we want to add something to the mix that's going to prevent that. In this case, we use clay lock. Um, so one to two of uh, the bottles of clay lock per 500 gallons will prevent your clays from swelling and starting to grab on your drill pipe um, and reduce your, your pressures down hole. So uh, very effective product, easy to use. Um, and uh, yeah, so generally what I tell guys is keep some clay lock on hand, keep it at your yard, keep it on your truck. You don't have to have it in every mix. It's more of an as needed. But they do have some guys that will run it in every mix because then in their mind they're thinking, well, I'm kind of being proactive about my drilling. If I have you know, my pro dye, my pro drill, my clay lock in my mix, I can drill through most any clay scenario. Um, Troy, you can probably speak to kind of how your market uses that if they do that. You know, the big thing is just keeping your torque down. And a lot of times what I'll do at night especially is before I stop, if I'm not completely drilled out on my bore, I'll rotate in position with my drill head and I'll monitor my torque. And then I'll come in in the morning, that's the first thing I'll do when I fire my drill up, is I'll check that torque again. And I'll see if that torque has went up or if that torque has went down or if it stayed the same. If it stayed the same, traditionally, I'm doing a good job stabilizing that hole. Yep, absolutely. Yep, so there's a clay lock in these sample kits as well. So you get to try some of that out. So we'll move into pro drill. So pro drill is really the, the backbone of our clay drilling system, of our fluid system. Excuse me. So pro drill, we'll dump it in through the top of your tank, it takes minimal agitation, it'll disperse out really fast. So a lot of guys, by the time they dump it in, walk to the drill, start drilling, it'll already have taken that water and put a lot of viscosity in it to make it super slippery. Um, so it's, a, it's gonna act as a friction reducer, that slipperiness, Coats your drill rods, coats your product for pulling back through the hole. Basically, coats that whole hole, whole hole. That's a weird way to say that. <laughs> and uh, but it keeps your rotation pressures, your thrust, and pullback pressures really low. So that's one benefit to running the pro drill is you'll notice, you should notice a pretty big decrease in, in your pressures down hole. Um, the other thing about it is it has a charge to it. So clay has to, its own charge to it. Pro drill has a charge to it, and they're actually attracted to each other. So what happens is as that pro drill comes in contact with the clay, it's going to break it down and it's almost going to kind of clump it up. So if you've used it before, you've probably noticed as that clay's flown back out of the hole, you'll get kind of like a cottage cheese looking consistency. That's what we want. And it may vary in size. It might be a really tight little grouping. It might be a little larger just depending on the type of the clay. But the goal there is for breaking down the clay. We're basically creating our own slurry down hole. So you think about like a bentonite slurry. We're kind of creating that in the ground with what God gave us, right? Um, so the pro drill is your backbone. So you always need pro drill when you're drilling in clay because uh, that's what's going to be doing the, uh, the majority of the work. So one other thing we do to try to kind of keep things simple is if you buy a, like a box or a full case of ProAction, on the back of every one of our new cases, there's actually a mixing chart, same chart that's inside of the, the little pamphlets we handed out. Um, so this will guide you through how to use all the products. So today we're just focusing on the clay products. Troy's got a sand mix he'll talk about, but kind of I'll walk you through how to read this because I know personally it can be a little confusing. Um, so we talked a little bit about a little bit about drill clean. If your tank is dirty, we're going to use drill clean to, to clean it up, right? Um, it's a completely optional thing. You don't have to use it at all, but that's what it's there for is to be a cleaner. Now, so we talked about ProDyne. It's a two-in-one, so it's going to treat hard water. So you notice at the top of our chart, we've kind of identified our soil condition, or we said, okay, I've got hard water. You can add a half a bag or half a bottle of ProDyne to treat the hard water. And then your soil, if it's really sticky clay, just use a full bottle of ProDyne. So you're always going to add the ProDyne to the tank first. 
Um, that's ideal anyways, because then it allows it to disperse out really fast before we add a polymer. Because once a polymer is in there, the water's, it almost, you know, it feels thicker basically. So anything you add from there, it's harder for it to kind of mix in. So add your prodine first. Now, if we diagnose and we think we're into a swelling play scenario, we'll next add our clay lock. And then anytime we're drilling in a sticky clay or a swelling clay, just clay in general, we'll be adding pro drill. So basically, you identify your soil condition first, and then you answer the questions on the top, and that's going to tell you exactly what you need to mix. Um, very rarely do you need to adjust from these baseline dosages we have on the chart. Um, pro drill, it's I've never moved it from one easy bag. It's very rare that you should need to do that. Um, so just keep that in mind because sometimes you guys will think, well, something's not working here, I'm just going to add more product, which doesn't always solve the problem. Sometimes it's a flow rate thing or a pullback speed or the type of the reamer. So there's, there's more that's going on there beyond just the chemicals. Uh, but assuming those other things are right, these dosages on here are very accurate. Um, so the mixing chart, like I said, so you've got got a sticker that'll go on the side of your tank. If you don't have one of those, you can just look at the back of our boxes and that'll tell you how to mix it as well. And if you don't have either of those things, we actually have an app that has all of the basic info on there as well. So you've got your, you've got contact info for me and our other reps. So we're just product support. Um, we're not selling anything or anything like that. So we're just available to support you in the field, help you out. The mixing instructions are on there. You have a distributor locator. So if you're not, whether you're looking for ProAction products or something Vermeer related, you can pull open our app and it'll tell you where the nearest Vermeer store is. Um, and then all of the basic product info is on there as well. So everything I've covered today, in addition to more information, is available through the app and then also on our website. Um, so if you don't have it, go ahead and download it. It'd be much appreciated. Um, and one other thing is I've got my business card, kind of, I think I put some back by the coffee and back by the donuts, but Please go ahead and grab one of those. I want to know how the products are working for you, and I want to be available to answer your questions. So please do uh, follow up with me afterwards, and uh, make sure you've got my contact info. And I'm going to, uh, unless you've got anything to add, Troy, I'm going to turn it over to you for the remainder of our session here. Okay. So like I discussed when we first started, most of the time, these are going to be our go-to products. But we're also going to have challenges on our job site where we're going to get into sand and gravel that um, are going to be even more challenging than maybe what these products will handle. And that's what I want to talk about is, is a, different, a different gear, a different solution for those sand and gravel products. And that's on this side right here. So I, I always think about, you know, when you get in sand and gravel, um, you know, it's, I think about taking my fist and putting it in a sandbox. And that's literally what's happening with your drill rod. You know, you put your fist in a sandbox, what's happening? You know, that sand is collapsing around your fist. And really what you need to do is, you know, you got to stabilize that hole. You need to build a, what we call filter cake or a wall to hold back that sand so we can get them rods through there and get our product back through there. So we, we've got to have clay to do that, bentonite clay. And that's actually what's in this sack right here is bentonite clay. Um, in that sack also is a product called no sag. Well, we don't want it to sag because we don't want it to collapse around, around our hole. We also have what Christian mentioned was soda ash. Sometimes when we're mixing fluids, guys, the hardness of the water dictates how well our mix will mix. And hard water won't allow the mix to basically form. It won't allow it to mix up. How can we check that? We check that with a term called the pH level. Simply going to like a pool supply place. And the way that they treat the water in pools, you know, they make what they call test strips. That literally you take and dunk that test strip in the water and in about two seconds, you will know the pH level of the water. And you're really looking for around a nine on the pH level. But there is soda ash in Maxmore that compensates for that. Is it enough? It may or may not be. Um, it just depends how hard your water is. Um, other products that we have when we're dealing with sand and gravel are uh, Poly Plus, which is right here, this jug here, which is like the Slickum. It helps suspend the cuttings. Uh, we have Rod Ease, which keeps stuff from sticking to our tooling. 
our reamers, our product, and then we have two other dry products called uh, Super Vis and Platinum Pack right here that basically intensify, soup up that Max Bore mix. And if you guys uh, can look at your chart here um, that I put in, basically you'll notice the first chart is sand conditions. And I put together, you know, basically these are our tank sizes, typical in the industry. 300 gallon tank, 500 gallon tank, 750, and then a lot of guys run 1,000 gallon tanks, so we just make, in essence, basically just take the 500 gallon tank and double it. And you always, when you mix fluids, you, if you have to use dry products, you always want to mix them first. So in these charts, that's the order that you want to mix those fluids. You always want to be mixing Max Bore first, Super Vis and Platinum Pack second because those are dry products. And then Poly Plus and Rod Ease are liquids. So those will be mixed last. Okay. So we have both sand and gravel conditions. Go to the next one. They're very similar in the amounts of dosages. The pullback rate. This is a great chart, guys, and this is just general knowledge. This is not subject to one product or the other, but we've done some neat things here. So if you look at this chart, um, the hole diameter, you know, what hole do you need to make? You know, when we're pulling back a reamer, what size reamer should we be using to pull back that product? Does anybody kind of know the rule of thumb? So if we've got four-inch product, what size reamer should we be pulling back? Basically, it's the outside diameter times 1.5. That is going to equal the whole size that we need to make. Now, there are times where we might even up that 1.5 to 2, depending on the product. Like maybe it's steel pipe, where it's less forgiving than plastic pipe. So we might use that safety factor of 2 instead of 1.5. So we have whole diameter, which literally is the whole that we need to make, four, six, eight, all the way up to 20. And then we also have a volume calculation. And if you notice on the next chart, um, down here, here are our formulas right here and here that help me define this chart. So this chart has already been figured to where it's a cheat sheet. Go back, Christian, if you can. So basically, we have a volume in gallons per foot. So if you look at that four inch at a one to one ratio, meaning it is designed when you disperse one gallon of soil, it takes one gallon of fluid to disperse one gallon of soil, we are pumping 0.65 gallons per foot. Six inch, 1.47 gallons per foot. And then the time frame below is also dictated there by our drill. So in essence, what's that saying? To be able to, to disperse one gallon of soil with one gallon of fluid on that four inch reamer with a 10 by 15, we need to be pulling back that rod in 45 seconds. If we're pulling less than that, we're out running our mud. If we're pulling longer than that, we may or may not uh, be putting too much fluid in the hole. Now you'll notice on the, on the last portion of that chart, we have what we call safety factors. And we realize out there when we're drilling guys that it may take two, three, upwards of five gallons of drilling fluid to disperse one gallon of soil. And if you look at that safety chart, go to the next chart, Christian. Um, if on the left, it shows you your soil type. So you got sand, gravel, and rock. Might be a one, two of uh, two gallons of fluid to disperse one gallon of soil. Sandy clay and clay, it may take two gallons of fluid to disperse, or three gallons of fluid to disperse one gallon of soil. So um, when we're figuring that, that, that volume calculation, we also want to take into consideration our safety factor. So too often when I'm out there or get phone calls, you know, I got guys that are looking at bid and work 
and they're they're they don't know you know how much fluids to allot when they estimate that job. So basically, you could take the amount of footage you got. Let's say it's three thousand feet. Okay, you can figure out how many tanks you of fluid you're going to use, how many bags of Maxbor you're going to use, and you're going to know right out of the gate how much in at least of somewhat of an estimate you're going to need to have to the job. I mean, there's some of these bigger diameter jobs, guys, where we're, we're going to need 30,000 gallons of, of fl fluid. Well, that is a huge expense. That might be five or $10,000 worth of boring fluid. So you, you basically can use these charts to estimate your work and not go into it blind. So we wanted you to have them. Um, We've got lots of companies that'll take these charts. I can even email them to you and take them, get them laminated, put in your visors and things like that. So um, appreciate the opportunity. Um, Pro Action Fluids for most of your soil conditions, probably 90%, it's quick. But then when we get in them sand and gravel conditions, we've got to use Max Bore and these fluids to be able to get through them efficiently. Again, we're gonna stick around. We don't wanna take away from the presenters. So if you do want more information, more uh, questions to be answered, we'll be around to do so.